If you've taken a DNA test and you're looking at your match list, one of the things that you might notice is that you've got a thousand or 10,000 or maybe even a hundred thousand matches. You might be thinking to yourself, you know, I got 10 cousins, so who are these other 90,000 people and how are they really related to me? And that's really the quandary that everybody has with genetic genealogy is determining how those matches are related to you. Now, as we look at the match list, what we can see here is the first one on this says it's a first to second cousin. Now, a first cousin and a second cousin are two different things. And there's actually some things in between a first and a second cousin. For instance, you could have a half first cousin or a first cousin once removed. So that first to second cousin actually represents a couple of different relationships. We have two here that are second cousins. And in this case, my wife has actually identified these specifically as second cousins. But then we get down to second to third cousin, which again, has some different things in between as well. And second cousins are not the same thing as third cousins. And as you go further down your list, you might even come up with something that is fourth to distant cousins. That could be fifth, sixth, seventh, eighth cousins. When you add in your once, twice, third times removed, you're talking about dozens of possibilities for that one match. Over at MyHeritage, sometimes they put a little bit more information in. So for instance, hey, this is a first cousin twice removed to a second cousin once removed. So they've actually got some of the generations removed as far as possibilities, which helps to narrow it down a little bit, but there's still a lot of things between a first cousin twice removed and a second cousin once removed. And again, as you go further down, the range of what those relationships is for that match can be much broader. So let's take a look at the shared CM tool. Now, if I actually put in how much DNA I share with a match, it's going to give me a list of matches and the probability that they are in that group. So for instance, here there's a almost 50% probability, one out of two, that they are either a half second cousin, a second cousin once removed, a half first cousin twice removed, or a first cousin three times removed. And as it goes down, you can see that, hey, there's actually probably a little more than a dozen possibilities here. Granted, the fourth cousin, it's only a 3% possibility of it, but still, there's a lot of relationships that this person that I match with could be. So the question then becomes, how are they actually related to me? I've been given this range here, but I want to find out how these matches are related to me. Now, I'd like to say it's simple, but it cannot be. So for instance, my heritage and ancestry have some tools that if you have put in a family tree and if these matches have put in a family tree, it can go and take a look at those. For instance, on my heritage, they have what they call smart matches. And this is when it is looking at the tree and it has actually found somebody in each tree who the my heritage algorithm believes is the same person. So in this case, we have Stephen Douglas Bell and we have Stephen Bell. We have Virginia Etta Fenton, and we have Virginia Fenton. Based on the birth and the death information and the places and the name, the algorithm has made the guess that these two are the same. But it is still up to you to go and actually verify whether or not those two are the same. So you can go and review some more information, see how they fit in the tree, maybe looking at their siblings or other information to determine that this is or is not that actual person. They also have on my heritage the theory of family relativity. Now, this is not just looking at trees of people, but also certain record sets that people are in and linked to other people. What you can find is with a DNA match, some different possibilities of who your common ancestor is. In this case, I'm looking at a Joan Janetta Litson and a Jesse Richard Smith Turpin, who through different children of theirs, come down to me and a match. Once again, this is just what the computer algorithm has put together as a possibility. You still have to go in and verify whether or not, one, these relationships are correct, but two, whether or not all the pieces line up 
to really call that the actual relationship that you have. Over on Ancestry, we have some similar tools. There is the Common Ancestors tool, which is who you share in common with your match. Again, it's comparing the trees, looking at the information of the names, the dates, the places for that. And in this case, it has Hugh Anthony Plumale and Catherine Cottrell, who are identified as likely common ancestors. You can go and look in more detail about each one of these people and make that determination for yourself. Then there is through lines. And through lines, similar to theory of family relativity, is looking at DNA matches, but matching up the trees that they share in common and possibly some other trees as a bridge. In this case, what it is going to show you is how those DNA matches might be related based on those trees as well as a little bit of other information, similar to the theory of family relativity. But once again, as you can see right here, it is telling you that you need to actually go in and evaluate some of this information. So through lines is not telling you exactly how you're related. Common ancestors isn't telling you exactly how you're related. My heritage smart matches is not telling you how you're related. And the theory of family relativity is not telling you how you are related. All of these tools that you can use on my heritage and ancestry are giving you clues of how you might be related. So to answer the question, you really don't know how you're related until you go and do the research. We can take these clues first off of DNA, giving us a list of relationships of what it might be, and then maybe some of the smart ancestors or the theory of family relativity and through lines to put a more solid guess, maybe zero in on one of those specific relationships. But then we have to do the other research work of identifying, okay, who the parents, who the grandparents are, and making sure that there are connections back to that common ancestor. Most importantly, on your own tree itself, you've got to make sure that that information is correct as well. Otherwise, you may show that you're related to lots of different people in lots of different ways that aren't real. So the answer ultimately in this video is there is no surefire, quick and easy, non-work way to determine how your matches are related to you. There's going to be some research involved. You can capitalize on these tools to help you out but in the end, you're still going to have to do some work yourself. If you like this video, then be sure to like it, subscribe to our channel, and if you'd like to join FHF Extra to have even more videos available to you, you can do that by clicking on the button below. Just so you're aware, I'll try to not do the sniffle while I'm talking.